Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully you guys are ready. We're gonna be talking about a pretty big topic right now. It's a huge, huge video. It's gonna, probably gonna be another 30 minute video like the influence one I had. Um, it's gonna be talking pretty much how to build up your town or castle. What I mean by this is um, this part. We're gonna explain this part. We're gonna explain all this stuff, how it works. We're gonna go kind of deep into it, right? I have a script. I'm going to put it on the screen right now. It is a huge script. It has a lot. It will also be in the description. So um, if you want to, you know, go back to it or, you know, translate it, all that, it's going to be down in the description. It's always in the description. I try to do it for every video. But yeah. So, okay. So we're going to start with, uh, so there's through four parts to this video, right? We're going to start with the upgrades itself, which are these right here. Then we're going to move on to policies right here that affect um, the upgrades. Then we're going to talk about skills, these bad boys right here. And then um, I'm going to talk about pretty much putting all this stuff together, how it works, um, and how to fix certain shortages or problems that the town or castle might have. Um, so let's start with uh, upgrades. So in the, what do you call it? In the script, there's a key list. It shows um, pretty much when towns or castles are the same, when a castle has better stuff than a town, when a town has better stuff than a castle and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, um, you know, a good, like I would say spreadsheet, but I didn't make this on spreadsheet, but it's like a good uh, comparison pretty much, right? So I'm gonna start with the town and then we're gonna go to a castle after this and we're gonna talk about each one. So towns, in my conclusion, towns are better than castles because they have some key things that castles do not. I'm not gonna, by the way, I'm not gonna go over the whole thing like the script says, I'm gonna kinda go off on it, but if you guys wanna read more detailed description, it's all in the description, okay? Just, just letting you guys know, it's all there. But yeah, so um, pretty much, when it comes to these fir first two, fortifications and garrison barracks, um, towns and castles have different names for them, but it's the, basically the exact same stuff. Maxed out, you'll get 100 bonus to garrison capacity from this one, and 100 bonus uh, garrison, garrison capacity to this one. Um, towns and castles both have them, so they're pretty much the same. Now we're going to move on to training fields. This um, is better in towns. The max level gives you plus four bonus to garrison troops. What does this mean? If you have troops in the garrison right here, these guys right here, their XP goes up just one more XP faster than uh, castles, right? Then if we go back, we have the marketplace. Castles do not have marketplaces, only towns do. So you get 30 bonus to taxes. I think it's just this, it's a 30 bonus. So it's, it's, it's a light upgrade, but hey, 30 dinars is 30 dinars. You know, it is what it is. Um, now we got lime kilns, I think that's how you say it. 15 bonus to village production. Like the villages that are bound to it, they get bonus production. This is actually, um, towns have less um, max production. This one only has 15, right? Has, la has less, ma I can't even say it. It has less village production than castles. So that's where castles are a little bit better, right? Then we have um, fairgrounds. These are the same, plus four max morale. This is the same for castles and for uh, towns. Then we have aqueducts. Aqueducts is only in towns. And this gives us um, plus two prosperity at max uh, upgrade. Then we have forums, another thing that's only in towns. This gives us, this gives the owner plus three influence. If we look right here, uh, the towns that I do own, you can see plus three, plus three, plus three, because I have them all max upgraded. This is very good. This is one of the reasons why towns are a little bit better because of this one reason. But there's also many more reasons. Um, then we have granary. Uh, which is right over here, 60 bonus to food stocks. It pretty much means um, food's kind of down right here, but I'm gonna show you how to fix this a little bit later. But pretty much what it does is, I think the max food is 100, maybe. I don't know what the max is, 
but this just adds 60 to the max, whatever it is, right? So more capacity. Um, then we have the workshop, and that one gives us three bonus to construction. Construction is how fast you can upgrade things. So once it's fully upgraded, construction really doesn't matter. But for, you know, when you're starting to just build all this stuff up, or like if you get a town and it's half built up, construction does help to build it up faster and give you better things, you know, faster. Uh, then we have Militia Barracks. It is, um... oh yeah, by the way, uh, the workshops and the granary, they are better in uh, towns than they are in castles. And then the Militia Barracks is the same and the Siege Workshop is the same uh, in castles and towns. So the Militia Barracks gives us a plus four bonus to Militia right here. And the Siege Workshop is 50, bon I mean 50 bonus to wall repair speed. If you get um, attacked and they break your walls during the siege, you can build it faster. Now let's go to castles. Uh, here's another castle that I own. Managed castle. Now this is different. See, it has a lot less, but it has some advantages as well, right? So wall, like I said before, wall and barracks is the same as the uh, fortification and garrison barracks of the town. Both give 100 to the garrison capacity. Training fields, like I said, it's a little bit worse than a town. Plus 3 instead of plus 4. Uh, gardens is a thing that only castles have and it gives us plus three food production this one also the um, Castellan's office it's um, 50 percent it's pretty much like you lose less militia during rebellions I don't know when rebellions happen I don't know if they're gonna be implemented later in the game or if they happen automatically without you getting notice but I guess it helps right you lose less militia this this is only in castles by the way as well then we have lime kilns again this one has better production um what's it called better production than towns by a lot because the ones in towns have plus 15 this one has plus 40 so the villagers are going to do a lot better if they're connected to a castle than if they are connected to a town if that makes sense then we have the granary uh this one's a little bit less it only does plus 30 to the maximum capacity towns do plus 60. Uh, then we have workshops, uh, pretty much workshops and uh, fairgrounds right here are both the same uh, for castles and for towns. Both give plus three for the workshop and plus four for the fairgrounds, plus four morale for the fairgrounds. Then we have siege workshops, the same thing, uh, wall repair speed if they get knocked down, plus 50. And militia barracks is also the same, your militia plus four, pretty much. Okay, and uh, now to the daily defaults. These are the same in castles and in towns. As you can see, this is like, whichever one you pick, it will daily give you plus one to whichever one you choose. Like, build house gives you plus one prosperity, right here. Train militia gives one, one to militia. Uh, morale. Is she not here for some reason? Weird. And then, uh, food. So, now that we're done with that, that that's just explaining the basic. I'm going to go further into it after we explain the policies and the skills. But I just wanted to explain to you what all this stuff does, right? Um, now let's talk about policies. There's a lot of them. There is a lot of policies. Let me take a drink real quick. And I might be speaking kind of faster because I'm trying to get through it. There's a lot to talk about. And like I said... If it's too fast to follow along, it will all be in the description, written out in bullet points, you know, very easy to read. Now, for policies, I'm not including policies that only benefit taxes. Uh, the ones that, like, you know, give you taxes from this, tax, I'm not including those because then I'm going to have to include literally every single policy except for, like, four of them. And I'm not trying to do that. I'm talking about the ones that, the ones that pretty much benefit these right here. These are the ones I'm talking about. So let's get straight into them. Policy-wise, Council of Commons, also a good one. Uh, each notable yields one influence per day. No, not that one. Daily militia production is increased by one per notable in the summon. What does that mean? For each, this one doesn't have it. This one doesn't have any nobles in it. But if we go back to our town, 
So what this pretty much does is, as you can see, we have five nobles or notables, whatever you want to call them, right? We have five of them, right? So if we go to our town and we go to our militia, as you can see, Council of Commons plus five. For each person that's in this uh, screen up here, you will get plus one for militia, which is very good. Uh, then we have castle charters. Castle upgrades cost 20% less construction. I know we're not in the castle right now, but if we were, these pretty much cost 20% less. But you might be of what? Dinars? No, of construction. That means they will be constructed faster, pretty much, because they cost less to construct. Um, then we have serfdom right here. Oh, but, but my bad. So this is castle charters. This is what it looks like, right? Now let's go to serfdom. We have towns gain one security, but lose one militia and one prosperity per day, right? Most of these are per day. Whenever I talk about plus one or plus, it's always per day, pretty much. Um, this is a good one, in my opinion. If Okay, so this is a good one if you are, uh, what do you call it? If you are attacking, because security is very important, plus the village influence gain is very good so you know depends what you want to lose right all all of these really depend on what you want to gain and what you want to lose what, how you want to build up your kingdom right some of these might be very good in your situation some of these might be very bad right just depends then we have magistrates magistrates it gives us uh plus one security for towns and all the other stuff i'm not going to list off all the other stuff i'm just going to list off how it benefits or how it negatively benefits the uh town or castle right because if i start going over everything it's just going to become the same video i made like two weeks ago about policies right so then we have trial by jury this uh settlement loyalty uh plus 0 0.5 but you lose 0 0.2 security then we have debasement of currency so this one pretty much um settlement loses one loyalty per day and when I say settlement, settlement means castle or town, just to make, you know, make it easy. Uh, and, and if it's just town or castle, I'm going to specify that. But if I say settlement, it means settlement, like as in town or castle, right? Uh, then we have road tolls. This pretty much, um, the prosperity goes down 0 0.2 per day, town's prosperity, just towns. Then we have bailiffs which gives uh, towns plus one to security. We have imperial towns. Um, towns held by the ruler clan, which is you if you own your, if you own your own kingdom, um, give plus one loyalty and plus one plus prosperity, but towns that are held by other clans that are not the ruler clan lose 0 0.3 loyalty, pretty much. Uh, then we have crown duty. Uh, Selman um, loses one prosperity per day. Then we have hunting rights. This is a very good one in my opinion. Food production in towns and castles are increased by two. And uh, the loyalty is decreased by 0 0.2. I think the plus side is way better than the bottom side. When it comes to like managing towns or castles, this is an amazing one in my opinion. Amazing. Uh, then we have war tax. This one, towns uh, negatively, uh, wait, towns lose one prosperity per day. Has some benefits, but yeah, it's mostly losing in that department. Then we have Charter of Liberties. Militia quantity increased by 10%, um, and it will be higher tier, so better defense if you think about it. Then we have Forgiveness of Debt. Uh, settlement plus two loyalty, but minus 5% production. You know, it depends on what, what you need at the moment, like I said before. Then we have citizenship. This one's kind of weird, but kind of makes sense. So you get uh, plus zero percent loyalty if the settlement that you own is the same culture that you chose in the beginning out of those six. Remember when you chose your character, you got to pick which one you wanted to be with the bonus. Pretty much that. So if they are the same culture as you, then you will get plus five loyalty. If it's not, you'll get minus 0 0.5 loyalty. And then uh, militia is increased by one regardless. Then we have tribunes of the people. Summon plus one uh, loyalty and plus one militia. Very good. 
Uh, oh, sorry about that. That's the, I was reading the wrong one. So, Tributes of the People is plus one loyalty for towns. Now, Grazing Rights is settlement plus one loyalty and plus one militia. And then we have the last one, which is... Uh, is it Cantons? Cantines? Oh, it's not Cantines. It's Cantons. I don't know. But this one right here, right? This one, uh, Settlements Gain plus one militia. So, boom. There is all the policies and how they affect uh, towns or castles. Not including ones that just give you tax upgrades or deductions, right? I'm not including those. We're including pretty much stuff that helps the town. Now, we got skills and perks. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this one. Like I said, it's going to be in the description. Why I'm not going too far? Because a lot of skills and perks are broken. Also... Um, what do you call it? They're gonna they're gonna overhaul the skills and perk system very soon, but I'm gonna kind of go over it very quickly. And like I said before, it's more detailed in the description if you want to read more about it, right? So let's go over some uh, key things, right? Uh, okay, so most of these perks do not work. Uh, they, oh no, they only work if you are the governor of the settlement. What does that mean? Uh, this guy. You can pick uh, your your spouse or your companions, right? You can't really pick yourself. So, yeah. So, they have to have the level of skills I'm, I'm going to start talking about for it to take effect, if that makes sense, right? So, trade and steward. Uh, if, we, if we talk about skill-wise, the trade and steward uh, ones right here, they have so many upgrades to towns. That I didn't want to even write all of them out because I'm gonna go over the YouTube um, limit in the descriptions over there, right? But usually every like second or third one gives you an upgrade to uh, your town, right? Or stuff that has to do with your town. Like every caravan entering your town gets 25%. I mean, 25 gold. We have uh, what's it called? Workshop workshop production, which is inside the town. Uh, what else? We have ones to do with shops where they return the gold. This one's very important. These two right here are very important. Uh, your town's uh, bound villages. If they are one of those four, as you can see, grain, olive, fish, or date production is increased by 20%. And if a village has more production, then the, uh, the castle or the town will have more food, which in turn will have more prosperity, which in turn will have more growth, right? So pretty much... Um, trade and steward let's look at some steward ones as well as you can see agriculture 30 percent more production from farms same thing you'll have more food um 50 percent more tax income from mines if you have like an iron mine as one of your towns as one of your villages right villages you own go at double the rate so pretty much a lot of these you're gonna have to go through them pretty much yourself because most of these benefit uh towns castles or villages in some way these two skills the most out of all of them right now um let's talk about some random ones real quick so we have two-handed we have at 50 right here we have garrison capacity garrison max size plus 10 and then we have the other one that you can choose which the wages will be reduced by five percent for the garrison units right then let's jump into riding at 150 we have grooming production of horse farms is increased by 50 percent what does this mean if they have a better production your town will be more successful you might be like wondering where's the horse production most of the time it's usually here where the kazates are or where the i keep saying their name wrong a seri a seri a sarai i don't know but yeah here there's a lot of horse farms and here there's a lot of horse farms so better production, like I said, better prosperity, better all that stuff, right? Then we have um, we have charm skills at 150. Where are they? So every project you've completed increases notable relationships with the owner by one, and uh, or you have a 10% to gain more relationship with the notables. Who are the notables? These boys right here. Whenever a project is completed, you might gain some good uh, reputation with them. With those perks. And then I'm going to skip over some, like I said before. It's on the description. I have like all of them written that I possibly could in the description. But I'm going to skip over some. 
So that's one of them in the charms. Let's go to leadership real quick. Um, at 75, we have gratitude. Towns gain 20% more loyalty. Or you can choose town garrisons are 20% more effective for security, right? And as you go up the leadership one, it's, it's also similar to trade and steward, but just a little bit less, right? Like if you want to focus on, I guess, the three main skills when it comes to this, is I would say stewardship, number one, trade, number two, leadership, number three, in my opinion, right? Because leadership has some also some very good ones. Because if you go to 125 uh, right here, dispenser of justice, increase security in a town by five while you're waiting at the town, right? Then we have uh, drill master. I think this one's very, very good. I didn't get it, but I should have, you know? But pretty much what this is, is, well, either one of these are really good, right? So this one pretty much, uh, when Militia spawns in your um, town, they might spawn as a better troop, which is always good for your security in battles. And then the Garrison, I mean the Drill Master one, Garrison gains 20% more XP. On top of, if we look right here, which one is it? On top of this right here, that can gain you a lot of XP, and then your garrison units, your garrison units will level up a lot, and you will have a very strong settlement. It will not be attacked as much. Now, that's a couple leadership ones. Now let's go to medicine real quick. Um, so we got one at 150, pristine streets. Increases uh, settlement prosperity by one or uh, what do you call it? Village health uh, grow rate by 20% increases the village health grow rate by 20% pretty much uh, Then we have one at 200 as well Which is physician of people increases loyalty of settlement by one per day and or you can choose that town projects related with sanitation or health give daily prosperity bonus of one per day what does that mean um if we go back to manage towns some stuff that has to do with health grainy granary has to do with health lime kilns has to do with health stuff like that pretty much aqueducts has to do with uh, as you can see it says healthy so that has to do with the sanitation aspect as well which will give you more so it's a very good perk to have now, uh, last one, engineering. Th these just literally have to do with your building speed. All of them. Pretty much speed of building castles and walls, speed of building catapults, you know, building development 1.5 is just faster building. More engineering, faster building. Now, if we go to this part right here, as you can see, uh, the higher engineering is, the faster building production you will have. And then, the higher leadership you have, as you can see, the better garrisons you can have, pretty much. Now, we got the skills out the way. Like I said, there's a more um, in the description. It will list more skills than I've talked about. I'm trying to keep it kind of shorter because we're already passing almost 25 minutes. So, yeah, it's on the description, okay? If you want to read more about it, if you want to really get into it. And like I said, they're going to change skills very soon. So, just FYI there. But let's bring it all together. Let's go back into here. Let's bring it all together, right? Here's some facts. Um, governors can be positive and negative. Once you assign them, check what they change. So if you assign a governor, right? You might sign a governor and then uh, wait some time. And then you can see what changed right here. Some governors will be amazing to the change. It will make the changes like 10 times better. As you can see, a lot of good stuff changed. But some governors that have no experience in, um, what do you call it? Because I'm pretty sure she has very good, uh, let's see. See, she has good trade and good stewardship, which are very, which are two very good things when it comes to, um, what do you call it? Like I said, those are two out of the top three that you need for um, good town management. But someone like this would be terrible for it because he's very good at fighting, but he's not good at, you know, owning your town. So he wouldn't be the best governor. So that's what you have to keep in mind. And that brings me to my second point. 
Oh yeah, by the way, if it's negative and you don't like it, go to Manage Town and get rid of it. Get rid of the person, you know, the governor pretty much. Now, um, like I said before, the best governors have high trade, steward, or leadership. Those are the best governors pretty much. Now, uh, do not waste too much money on reserves right here. I waste a lot of money kind of to show you. You don't need this much. 10K is more than enough. And to be honest, you don't really need to spend 10K. Especially early game, you can just save it. As you can see, I have a lot, so I don't really, it doesn't really matter at this point, right? But 10K is plenty to upgrade everything in a castle or a town, in my opinion. Now, um, if you ever want to find out why this is plus six, why this is plus four, or you know, or if it's negative, you can always mouse over and it tells you either um, the effect, like you see right here, is starving and culture. I don't have the right culture to own this, so obviously it's a minus, right? Because I picked Kazates, and this is not the Kazate region. This is the uh, Sturgeon region, I think, right? Um, then, as you can see, we're also starving because we don't have enough food. But since we added this governor, her, she gives us plus to the food, right? Then we also have, uh, as you can see, hunting rights, trial by jury, and imperial towns, and all those. Those are the policies we talked about earlier. And then all the way at the bottom, you can see, uh, not all the way at the bottom, then you can see fairgrounds and security. As you can see, that, that loyalty is helped by security right here. And it's also helped by the fairgrounds, which is the upgrade. As you can see, it's all coming together, all these things, the upgrades, the different uh, aspects of the town, plus the skills. As you can see, there's a skill at the end that says parade perk bonus. See, skills and perks, and then, you know, everything comes together pretty much. It's a lot of stuff for it, but it's kind of once you get the hang of it, once you start kind of looking into this and how you can really fix it and see if it's a viable fix, that's how you can, you know, really manage a better town in my perspective, right? So, yeah, just mouse over this, see what's affecting it, see if you can get rid of it, right? And pretty much go from there. Now, uh, for militia, just a quick fact. Um, militia over time goes down like the this goes down right now I have plus 1.46 it's gonna go down why because more and more militia retire over time so yeah you're gonna have to garrison more units to pretty much make up for the militia loss over time now um, if you want to make more food what I would suggest doing is two things either get rid of units in your garrison as you can see that's Minus 24 for me. So getting rid of more units will make you more likely to be attacked. But if it's in a safe place, you can afford to do it. Like, as you can see, this town is in a safe place. Even if I didn't own the whole map, right? It'd still be in a safe place. So they don't need that big of a garrison. Uh, how big is the garrison? I'm pretty sure this has a massive garrison. Massive, as you can see. <laughs> but, um, yeah, what else? Okay, so very high prosperity might seem good because you'll get more money, right? But it's terrible on the food. More prosperity, more people are going to come. Therefore, they need more food to be uh, made. Um, I would suggest picking some stuff that minuses prosperity. As you can see, serfdom is a minus of prosperity. And I would suggest just going negative on prosperity for like, you know, a month or two of in-game time. Bring this back down. Yes, your money will go down a little bit. But your food's going to be better and overall your settlement's going to be better. But that's up to you. Right, do you want more money or do you want your uh, people to be starving? Up to you, like always. And um, another thing that helps, give fiefs. What I do when I uh, recruit clans, as you can see my clans thing, I have clans from all over the place, from all over types, different types of uh, cultures, right? Why do I do this? Because... When I take over di distant lands, right? I want somebody in the Kazate culture to have Kazate fiefs. I want somebody in the As Asurai culture to have their fiefs, right? Because they will get bonuses. Um, as you can see right here. Uh, where is it? Instead of plus... Uh, see, look. We have another governor's culture. Minus two because she doesn't have the same culture. You know? So... Cultural differences, they kind of play a little key into it, but not huge, but they do play a factor in it, right? But yeah, that's going to wrap it up. 
hopefully this taught you something like i said the full description will have everything that i've said and more and yeah i enjoy making these uh longer type of videos where i explain stuff further in like i said if you have any questions if you have anything to add please add it down below and yeah like always just you know stay safe you know keep supporting if you want to support i really appreciate it um we're starting to do very good numbers and uh yeah starting to look very good i appreciate all everything you know i really do so it's, uh, it's a blessing man you know so uh yeah i'll see you guys next time